a &E Indiana fans, this is Mike Pegram with Jeff Rab Johns, right from CenturyLink Center here in Omaha. And Jeff, um, we're watching it, uh, Wachita State in, in their uh, opening public practice before tomorrow night's game uh, right here. And we've had the experience of watching Indiana practice and, and getting into the locker rooms to talk to the Wichita State players as well as the Hoosier players. It should be a fun game tomorrow. Um, what were some of the things you, you brought up in those, in those locker room interviews today? Well, I think one of the biggest things was getting a chance to talk to Hunter Prey about exactly what happened with his knee injury. We were able to just ask him exactly what did happen, and he said that he, he hurt his kneecap the same as he did the first time, but not nearly as bad. He did say he is in some pain. Uh, he did say that he went through some uh, actual practice uh, last night, uh, and obviously we saw him out here on the court today. You know, he moved around pretty well. Nothing was at game speed, uh, but he did move, and it looked like a guy who certainly has a chance to play. He said he is not yet cleared. He, in his words, he is hopeful that does not happen tomorrow. Uh, so that was one of the big takeaways from, from our conversations in the locker room today. I had a chance to talk to a lot of the players about the tempo today. Mm -hmm. uh, even Tim Buckley, who I might, might have the scout for the Hoosier staff. Uh, they think that the Wichita State is a very good transition offense team. So you can't just look at those points per game with Wichita being much lower on the numbers than Indiana and, and assume that Wichita won't run with this team tomorrow, which I thought was really interesting. And, and they have the experience to make decisions, I think, against, against you know, a team, whether it be fast or lower pace. Yeah, and I think that's an interesting point because I think sometimes when people look at aggregate numbers, they assume that that's exactly how a team plays over all 40 minutes yeah. of the game. And I think that's pretty in inaccurate about uh, Wichita State. And I was talking to uh, Ron Baker for a little bit in the locker room and asked him about that. And he was like, hey, you know, we run. We just don't run all the time. And then he's, he was like, you know, we're, we're pretty comfortable running. And, and if they want to run, we're okay running. And I said, well, what if the game gets up into the 70s or 80s? And he was like... He just kind of looked at me like, well, what kind of question <laughs> yeah. is that? He's like, that's fine. So I think it's interesting that they feel comfortable, or at least they say they're comfortable, at, at different paces. One of the other things I had fun with in the locker room today was talking to uh, Fred Van Vliet, who played against Yogi Ferrell a couple times in high school, talking about uh, he played for a lower-profile AU team, and he kind of enjoyed that because they, they knocked off these high – profile, you know, EYBL, Adidas Gauntlet type teams all the time. Mm -hmm. And he said that's that's the story that a lot of these guys on the Wichita State team, they were underrated in high school. Wichita State is Greg Marshall have really found uh, these guys, whether they be junior college or, or in, like in Van Vliet's case uh, in high school. And, and uh, they, they've turned him into stars. I mean, Ron Baker probably has an NBA future. And where was he on the rankings? <laughs> hey, well, exactly. And, and I think uh, it was interesting when I was talking to Greg Lancy of Indiana State the other day, who obviously uh, pays very close attention to Indiana, but uh, coaches against Wichita State in the Mo Valley. He said that, you know, they do play with a chip on their shoulder. And he said that's one of the things that people sometimes underestimate is how much of a chip on the shoulder that they have. And I think the more you, like you did, you know, kind of talk about the stories of the players, the idea that Wichita State has a chip on its shoulder sort of mirrors a lot of its players and, and how they've, they've come up as basketball players. They feel like the underdog. Yeah. So being on a quote-unquote underdog team, that's not really anything new for some of these players. Uh, and when I was talking to uh, Tequil Cotton, asked him about the whole chip on his shoulder, and he's like, we have a chip on our shoulder every game. I don't care what <laughs> name's on your jersey. And, uh, you know, this is not a big team. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure the Wichita State fans are thinking, well, this is good. They're playing a team that doesn't have size. And then Indiana fans are thinking the same thing. Something has to give a little bit. Well, yeah, it, it does. And uh, one of the things that the Wichita State players said that they were most concerned about was the fact that Indiana can put five guys on the floor who can shoot threes uh, when they put Colin Hartman out there in, in the post. Um, and I asked, I asked a couple of the guys from Wichita, like, what game film have you seen? And they didn't, they didn't want to quite reveal that. But certainly they've seen enough to know that, that Colin can shoot threes. Um, they did say they saw Troy make some threes, so that at least suggests they saw some film from later in the season. Uh, and it sounds like that's one of the big things that they're concerned about. Another thing that's really going to be interesting is Wichita State, for the most part, likes to put Tequila Cotton on the other team's best offensive backcourt player. But with Indiana, that could be James Blackman. It could be Yogi Ferrell. You know, you, you're going to have a choice to make. So I think that's going to be one of the interesting decisions to watch early. Who does Greg Marshall start Cotton at guarding uh, for Indiana? Wichita State's about a five or six point favorite. They're the higher seed. Some people think they should have gotten a five or six seed. Besides the experience, which we've already talked about, what makes that team, at least on paper, the, got, the team that, that, that most people are betting on tomorrow? 
Well, I, I think they are, they're, they're incredibly efficient. Uh, they've got four guys who have more steals than turnovers on the season, uh, which speaks to, uh, one, they don't turn it over too much. Two, they've got multiple guys who are active on defense. I think that stands out quite a bit. Um, and I think the fact that they're really good at, at defending the basket, defending the paint, and defending certain areas on the court, some of the stuff that they do defensively with areas that they try to take over, it, it kind of mirrors Michigan State a little bit. It's not identical, but it, but it's got yeah. shades of what is a likes to do. Um, so those are the things to me that stand out the most in addition to the fact that even though they aren't, they aren't big height wise, these guys have been in the weight room. These are grown men as far as college basketball players go. They are some guys who I think defensively like to initiate contact. You know, you've know, got some guys who are okay playing with contact and you've got the other guys who intentionally initiate yeah. it. I think Wichita State guys are very comfortable if they're the guys who initiate contact. You mentioned Michigan State. I was I was thinking, I thought Butler would be, might be a a reasonable comparison for a team that Indiana has played. Anybody else that you think could kind of fit the role? Um, you can see Butler a little bit with, with some of the way they play and some of the things they do with, with Roosevelt Jones. Yeah. Obviously, uh, Roosevelt Jones is kind of what you would call a pretty much uh, undersized uh, power forward with, with essentially what he does for Butler. Uh, you look at uh, Wichita State, and they've kind of got similar things because really – on paper, it's almost like they play four guards and a forward. Yeah. Uh, one of the guards, they, they kind of list as a forward. Okay, he's a 6'4 forward for all intents and purposes. So, yeah, there are there are shades of Butler there. Um, a little bit of Michigan State. Um, a little bit of Wisconsin on offense as far as they will screen, reek screen. Uh, they will set multiple screens. And, 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 and they've got guys who can go inside and out. Nobody, obviously, compares to Frank Kaminsky as a player. But with where Kaminsky moves inside and out, Wichita State does have guys guys who have similar type movement, not comparing anybody to Kaminsky, just talking how they move, where they move to on the floor. Okay, and then Wichita State, I think uh, we're here in Omaha, Nebraska, only about four or five hours away, even closer for the Kansas fans if you're, if you're talking the Kansas City, Lawrence area. Um, you know, there, there's a decided fan advantage from what I noticed today in the, in the open practices uh, in terms of Kansas and Wichita State fans. Do you notice that? Uh, yeah, well, I think I think if you just look around as the teams practice, uh, you see uh, an awful lot of the black and gold for Wichita State. You certainly saw a lot of Kansas blue. Uh, there was a, a nice contingent in one section uh, with Indiana red, so yeah. Indiana does have some fans who are already here. But certainly I think it looks like there's an awful lot of Kansas, Wichita <laughs> State, uh, and uh, you know the local fans certainly uh, making their presence felt. Yeah, it's going to be a, a little bit of a home edge for the – the Shockers, they, they support their team well. When you've had this many years of really good success, Final Fours and, and NCAA tourney uh, consistency, you get that support. And they really they really showed up here, as you can see. Maybe you can tell in the background. Um, so it's going to be a little bit of an edge for, the, for, the, for Wichita State. Um, the first game will be Kansas. Um, you know, so at 12-15, just everyone is unaware of, the approximate game is uh, time is 2.45 Eastern for mm-hmm. Indiana. And as we saw already today, upsets can happen. You've seen a, a Big 12 team go down, number three seed. So it's it's already a fun tournament, isn't it, Jeff? Well, it's <laughs> it's it's my favorite time of year, yeah. and I certainly really enjoy. Just you know, I've always loved the yeah. tournament, and uh, it, it does have a really cool vibe in the arena. Uh, you know, fans coming out and watching open practice, which is basically watching your team shoot around. Yeah. You know, it's not even really what you would call a practice practice. Uh, it's it's a shoot around and those kind of things, but it is fun. There's an incredible amount of energy. And talking to guys, it's always fun to talk to guys who are in the tournament for the first time and kind of see it through their eyes. You know, with Indiana, you've got a lot of guys uh, who are here for the first time. Robert Johnson, Colin Hartman, all the rest of them. Basically everybody except for Yogi Ferrell and Hunter Perea. Um, but even talking to the Wichita State guys who've been to a Final Four, they were really amped up. And they said, you know, it's just special to be in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, and it's fun for us is to cover an NCAA tournament after being a uh, year away from it. And we enjoy bringing you the rest of it. And tomorrow, it, they, they play for real. And, it, and when Jeff and I will be courtside to bring you the best at peaks.com. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah.